Oh, why hello there, knights and... Oh, I didn't think this one out ahead. <laughs> I'm very tired today. I had to work in the yard and stuff. But I thought it would be fun to do an episode of Draw D&D. &D. I didn't do the intro. Wait, what was I saying? Oh, man. I had something prepared. Well, whatever. Let's just get into drawing some characters and <laughs> talking about nonsense, evidently. I made up my own list today. So I just got a trusty D6, and there's no crazy... Uh, let's decide the color after I decide what this is. So number four, a rogue. And I have an emotion in here, an innocent rogue. Oh, intrig intri intriguing. An innocent dwarven rogue, very unlikely. I, if I do say so myself. All right, I'm going to choose a, uh, what's an innocent color? I'll do it in pink. All right, let's draw this innocent dwarven rogue. So I was thinking, I'm curious about, like, the people who watch this channel. I mean, I'm sure there's a great diversity, but I'd like to stereotype you guys. <laughs> I mean, okay, so I'm just thinking, like, what if it's all just people exactly like me? Well, I like fantasy stuff mostly because I like, like, battle, I think? Which is weird because I'm not very violent, but I really like the idea of battle. And that's why Super Smash Brothers is like the ultimate battle simulator experience. And if any of you guys, you can... Okay, look, I shouldn't be saying this. But if you own the game... Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But you have to buy the GameCube controllers and stuff. Anyways, you can set it up on your computer and you can play on something called Netplay. And we can play online together. And I would totally love to play Smash with, with all sorts of peeps. But anyways, that's why I got into fantasy stuff. And that has led me, like I have this desire to know just, to kind of, oh yeah, okay, oh, I forgot, innocent dwarven rogue. This is actually pretty, kind of innocent dwarven rogue. I wasn't even thinking about what I'm doing, but it's kind of working out. Maybe he doesn't have a beard. Because he's a rogue, it's kind of, that's like a... He's left his dwarven society, so he was forced to cut his beard. So yeah, do any of you guys... Um, oh yeah, and that got me into like practicing martial arts and sword fighting and all sorts of stuff. And another thing, okay, and then, so I'm just curious, like if you guys resonate with any of this, or have like similar thoughts... I always do the curly thing, and I told myself, you know what, if I like the curly thing, I'll do the curly thing. Then let me know, because I'm curious, very, very curious. What can I do about his hair? <laughs> Alright. So the limits of human ability is something that intrigues me. And in this quest, I came across something very intriguing indeed. A manuscript by the name of Project Superman. You can go Google that. But wait, there is an, uh, what a disclaimer. All right. Uh, I think I would say that the contents are rated NC-17. All right, and I'll tell you what's why why that is or what what we're talking about here. Um, so oh, we rogue. Okay, so this is supposed to be. This is this document is the product of a man who ha is re. Oh man, what are all the words for these things? He's remembering things. That he had forgotten. Okay? He's remembering things that he did and he was. And all that happened to him over many years. Because he was 
a super soldier. And look, this sounds like craziness, and it does sound like craziness, but I actually think that this thing is real. Because just reading it, it's so like... Like, to me, I always think about these things I read, and I'm like, okay, there's a couple options. This is how I see it. Either, I mean, I guess one option is that just a crazy person wrote it. Uh, but I would have to say, they probably may live like schizophrenic and stuff, they just have such, because it just has such a vivid, I don't know, I don't know, you'd have to read it yourself and get back to me. Anyway, so I suspect that it's true, and there's some crazy things he talks about in there. Um, and, uh, basically, one of the things that he talks about is the Silva mind control method, and this was a, uh, a type of kind of meditation developed by Jose Silva and I in the 70s, I think. Or maybe earlier than that even, actually. And basically, he, this guy, he was an electrical engineer, and he discovered that human beings work, um, like, function most efficiently. He was, he was studying the frequencies of brain waves, and he discovered they fit into different categories. And the one in which people function most efficiently is this alpha state okay so it goes beta at the top that's the most um the most the highest frequency and that's the state that oh i gotta be quiet my wife's sleeping i want to wake her up um that's the frequency that most people function on most people function on a day-to-day -day basis um and it's like the uh, kind of problem solving, alert problem solving kind of mode of the brain, okay? And then below that there's alpha. And that is, we're going to talk about that a lot, the alpha state. So I'm going to get back to that. But then below that is the um, delta. And that's when you're like falling asleep. And then theta is when you are already asleep. I mean like in a deep sleep, like REM. Okay, and so he discovered that people are in a state of flow, maybe you've heard this term, in, uh, oops, oh, alright, whatever, are most in a state of flow when they're in the, or when they're in a state of flow, their brain waves are functioning at the alpha level, and that's the level that we function kind of intuitively and are able to do things that, like, like when you're playing your best and you're just, like, if you play a sport, or I don't know, or drawing and stuff like that, like, sometimes you're just like, dang, I'm just drawing so good today, like, and it's just, like, effortless, and for some reason you're just drawing better. That would be considered, like, a, a state of flow, and you're probably in an alpha brainwave state. Probably weren't thinking super hard, analyzing everything you're doing, trying to, like, judging yourself and stuff like that. You're probably just, you know, like, doing it, and it's just kind of coming naturally. And so, um getting back to the Project Superman thing. Anyway, so, apparently in the Project Superman thing, he was, like, uh, just naturally this guy who's writing this manuscript. And one of the reasons I believe it's kind of real, I kind of believe it's real is because it's so, like, imaginative and interesting and, like, kind of random, you know, the way life is. It's not, like, following, like, a plot line where there's a villain or anything. It doesn't seem like it was written as a, um, you know, as like a prose or something like that. And it doesn't seem like it was written by a good writer. The grammar's terrible, and the, like, the story doesn't, like, end at proper chapters or something like that, and it kind of, like, rants a lot and uses caps and weird stuff like that. So, like, if someone had this kind of imagination and wanted to write this badly that they would actually write this, don't you think they would try to write something more coherent unless they're so clever they're trying to trick us that always goes back to that people who are uh, more skeptical but anyways I feel like you got to use your intuition and just you know you can never really know the truth but um anyways so let's so that's not the point that's neither here nor there for now so he can do things like basically what he what happens is he's hypnotized to just do whatever people whatever his controller says um without thinking and so if he said like in one instance he says like okay shoot this bullet 
through the center of that target, the exact center. And he goes, and he just does it. Never, he said, and he talks to people, he's like, you just don't, he like gives you advice on how to be superhuman in it in an interesting way. Um, or you can learn how his like thinking is or how he was able to do all these crazy things. Like uh, crush a um, piece of metal pipe in his hand because they told him it was a banana. So he was like mind over matter. His he was able to crush it because, but also he was like super strong for other reasons before that. But like you know, crushing metal pipe is beyond even like super strong people. But then there are humans who lift up trucks in like dramatic situations. So um, it's not completely outside of the realm of possibility. Should I erase out the light area? I think I'll do that. I guess. I've really been working on this, what is he called? A, uh, and I don't like drawing pupils, I've noticed. I'm not going to. Okay. Do, do, do. My wife's like, looks, you gotta put a pupil, it looks so much better. Yeah. Whatever. Um. What were we saying? Anyways, so the Project Superman got me more interested in the Silva method and I started to study it and it actually is really cool you guys should check it out like what happens is you create well this is what he did and I'm not sure if I found I think what he did was not he started in the Silva program but then he ended up with this with the military and then did different things so I kind of incorporated and this is supposed to what you're supposed to do in Silva method is kind of come up with your own stuff once you understand the basic principles which I think is really cool where you, he has this control room where he's able to do things like if he's injured, he has a healing fountain. And uh, when he goes inside the healing fountain, he is able to heal. Because you know, like your body, like people will get healed from cancer miraculously. And it's like, oh, okay, I guess your body just healed miraculously from cancer. Why didn't it do that in the first place, you know? Or why doesn't it do that for everybody? So I think it's kind of tapping into this subconscious the sub the potential of the subconscious mind all right guys listen i didn't mean to get all serious on you and then turn you into superhuman superhumans and that just happened all right so now that you understand the potential of your subconscious mind You can't go back to the way things were, my friend. <laughs> oh yeah, so it'd be kind of super random. All right, let's roll another character. This was fun. Uh, look, I always want to get the beard looking rounder. It never looks quite round. It looks so flat. Oh, I gotta leave a space in the middle, maybe. Is that doing it? Am I doing it, guys? Am I really doing it? I don't think I'm doing it. Nope. You didn't do it, guys. Didn't do it. I'm watching a, a show, uh, Silicon Valley. It's, it's really good. Alright, you should check it out. It's about some programmers in Silicon Valley. Rogue, another rogue. Alright, whatever. Two. A happy rogue. Oh, okay. A happy Elven Rogue. Alright. Yeah, I guess I'll do orange. Oh, I should have left this thing. Whatever. Alright, a happy Elven Rogue. So you guys really gotta... So, okay, so I'm gonna teach you some... I'm gonna give you the rundown. Because I don't think most people will check it out. I'm always like, I just want to mention things to people. I'm going deep into the internet, but it's actually not like there. It's it's kind of. I don't know if it's still going on. Oh, Happy Road. I don't know if it's still going on. Uh, but the website looks like it's from the '70s. Actually, it's, it is like kind of. I don't know. Someone's selling it. I think it's run by his daughter or something. It's the company because he's passed away. May he rest in peace. Lord have mercy upon his soul. And. Uh, Oh, cool, I'm looking how this, how this elf is coming out. It's happy elf and rogue. 
Maybe I'll give him like a couple scars to show that he's he's been in a little he's been in a little, in a little scrap. So, anyways, I'll tell you more about it since I don't know. I'm I'm kind of like that, especially when something seems like like some occultic knowledge, not in the like satanic evil occultic, but in the dictionary sense of the word in that occult means like secret knowledge something seems like hmm not many people know about this this is intriguing then I'm always like checking out you should check out sacred texts if you're interested in stuff like that too but um okay so the silver method you're gonna it's so okay so the idea is that you gotta slow down your brain waves you gotta slow them down and you can function consciously in alpha state but what you can't do is like like think too hard about stuff. I don't know how to describe it. Like um, the mind has to be in a piece. Okay, let me. I feel like right now I'm in beta. I'm talking a lot and I'm thinking a lot, but I think I'm in low beta. So let me try to relax and go and be more like. All right. So what I did is I'm tapping my three fingers together and then that has been set as a trigger to go into alpha state and it's so interesting because they make it so that it's not difficult because it's like going to alpha state is not the things of your subconscious mind it's not like something where you sh I guess there is training but it's not it shouldn't be because it's there and it's freely available the only restriction is your own mind putting restrictions on it. So you kind of just like from the get go, they say like, okay, you're gonna set this tri We're gonna count to down from uh, three. Uh, when we get to one, you're going to be in the alpha state, okay? And then even on the first meditation, you say just gonna assume you're in the alpha state, all right? And you're just gonna and you probably will be because it's basically just like a relaxed state, and they're gonna say like, close your eyes. Uh, you know, like whatever, breathe deeply, um, just like basic meditation type stuff. Uh, you feel your body relax, okay? And then what happens, and so once you've learned to reach alpha state, you can kind of relax. It's a more relaxed state. You don't feel like you're so busy to be so busy. And the idea is that you're right on the bridge of your conscious and subconscious mind because once you go into delta then uh, you can still be conscious in delta and it's interesting because he found that like he was doing studies and he found that monks who meditate like in traditional buddhist ways do enter uh delta states like early delta states not deep delta states where you're sleeping or even deeper if they're really proficient but the idea is they're going into very slow brain waves and in that area they're isn't really a space for conscious thought and um, like reasoning and stuff like that. It's like when you're sleeping, you know, like even and you're not usually consciously thinking or like your mind's kind of doing its own thing. Anyways, whatever. I'm not that, like, I don't, hmm, I wonder if, that's interesting. Now I have a new goal because I want to see, experience what it's like to be kind of in a conscious Delta state. That would be very interesting. Maybe I'm just gonna leave this guy like that. I like him. I should do some research into that. I'm sure there have been lots of studies on brainwave and uh, deep meditation. Because now this alpha, beta, delta wave, this is mainstream, but he was one of the earlier people to like look into it. And uh, I think he's a lesser known pioneer. Because his, okay, so he did these studies on his children because they do, weren't doing well in school. And he was trying to figure out how to get them to do well in school. And he started to study this, uh, like, he found, I think, I don't know if he found out about meditation or what it was. And he noticed it was helping the children, so he really, like, looked into it. And, um, and that's how he, like, developed the Silva Method. So... So after you kind of like gotten used to, or whatever, the next step would be to, like there's all sorts of stuff, there's different things, like 
you see to meet you can you can have kind of like guides and they're now this is where things get like this is where if you're more of a on the uh more traditional religious perspective, either Christian or maybe Muslim as well, um, might be worried about this being like a demon thing. All right, I don't think it is because I think it's just like a manifestation. I see. I believe there's like, and this is Jose Silva also was a religious person, and he believed that there was. It's a little like I know I'm ranting like crazy and not really following a coherent a line of thought, but that's how these kind of subjects go, because unless I'm going to go really deeply into one subject, then it's going to lead from one thing to the next, and if you guys want me to go really deeply into one subject, let me know, but I should like reread stuff, because a lot of stuff is like, I used to be into this a lot more a while back, and uh, so like, a lot of it isn't quite as clear, I should do more meditation stuff though. Currently, that would be good for me. Um, so what was I talking about? I have no idea now. Let's finish up this Elven Road. So I have this video. I made another Draw D&D before this. And... Uh, Alright, let's shade the whole thing. Kind of outlining this process that I'm doing right now. But I have to edit it together because I have to speed it up and stuff at parts and blah da bing blah, blah blah blah. And my video editing software takes forever to load up. And when I tried to do it the first time, it was just like meh. It, it, didn't, it didn't work out. I think it froze or something. So, I gotta do that. But I'm liking this new method I've learned to uh, to drawing stuff. This like I've now I've finally gotten a um, workflow, like a kind of step by step procedure. I do a sketch, then you know I do some shading, and then once I've gotten like some basic shading, then I shade the whole thing in. As you just saw me do a minute ago. And then once I've shaded the whole thing in, I come in with some highlights. And here I can just keep going darker, keep shading to my heart's content. And then after that I add color. So I think in the video I also go into the, all the way into the color stage. But I'm just going to stop here for these ones. So let's give this guy some more distinctive eyebrows or something. He could be a little more interesting. Oh yeah, little, little triangle brow sounds cool. It's weird. And then I wonder. I don't know. Let's do that. So do you guys think of that? Think of like unlocking your full potential, or uh, or at least understanding it. Oh yeah, so I was gonna talk about Jose Silva and his ideas about. Okay, so he believes that there's this collective subconscious, and he's very like when he writes about it, he's like, "This is what I think," you know, like he's not like I have all the answers, but I think he's a I'm a pretty reasonable man, and this kind of makes sense based on other stuff, you know. It's not just like an idea he came up with out of the blue. But there's some kind of collective subconscious that is almost like a field of consciousness that we can all access and has all the collective information of like mankind. Like all the memories of everyone, everything that happened, blah blah blah. It's like a database. And um, this is explaining like a lot, some strange phenomenon and stuff. But also, what it does is it allows you to have access to like any information if you can use this system. And also, uh, so he called this, I think, a collective subconscious or something. And then it's like a super in intelligence or a super intelligence. I don't know. Anyways, but. Uh, something like that, but it's kind of like, I don't think it's sentient, 
you know what I mean? Like it's more of like a magnetic field, but it's like a consciousness field. But then he also believed that there's God, and that's different. And he was to say like when I face problems that like, um, you know that these kind of that these methods can't can't cure because it also like it's for curing illness. He helped lots of people cure illnesses apparently using this method. Um, or using like, you know, like based on the idea of like, oh, on the alpha state you can heal more effectively and stuff. Um, but anyways, when he can't fix something like that, he'll, you know, pray, he still prays and stuff like that. I don't know. Whatever. So I think that's all I wanted to say. I don't think there are like more levels to it than that. But then you have your own subconscious. Oh, I guess that would be the level underneath that is your own subconscious. And, uh, alright, let's roll one more. And that's like having full control over your body, like the involuntary uh, mechanisms of it. And, like, what if your body's, like, overproducing some hormone and it's, like, causing a problem and you have to take medication or something like that? Like, why can't you just tell your body, stop overproducing that hormone, it's not helping? And then it's just like, shutting down hormone things. So in like the Silva method, you would actually maybe like imagine this control room that you have like your healing fountain in and stuff. And there's a lever or like some or a dial, however you want to imagine it, or even like a pool of, and the more liquid is in this pool, the more, uh, what's it called? The more of this hormone you produce and you see the pool is filled up. So you're like, all right, let me empty the pool. So you empty out the pool and that you're subconscious mind understands the symbolism and says oh that means i need to stop uh creating the because it's also in the alpha state which is closer to the brain waves level that the subconscious mind works in so it would be more likely to be triggered um or active so i just rolled a six a bard okay four a confused bard a classic and a confused gnome bard this is like right up my alley should make him green Maybe red. Uh, how about a nice, a confused gnome bard? Nice blue green. How about that? Oh my gosh! Once I get a nice computer, and um, I can do a little bit of editing, add a little music or something, some little some some like that. You're gonna be painting with Shams Ross. <laughs> Uh, okay, no. Peyton with Shams Ross. Let's do this one looking at, looking at these other two fellas. Do, 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 do. Ah, hello there. It's wonderful to have you painting along with me. Today we're going to paint a gnome. I like gnomes. They're very playful creatures. They like to sing and dance in the woods frog around. Sometimes they dance naked. That's a little naughty for me. But gnomes will do as they will, little critters. Well, today we're going to be drawing a confused gnome. So, let's just have these eyebrows just swooping in like that, like a baby bird. Swooping in from, from its nest, swooping down. I have some baby birds in the studio. Muffin and Jingle. I got them from the bird lady. We're gonna we're gonna have a little mouse right here. Maybe the mouse just living right 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 up there. Just just living his happy little mouth life. Very small mouth. Some gnomes have big mouths, some gnomes have small mouth. What does your gnome look like? Sometimes I add a secret mouth right around the corner nobody knows about. A little mouth right there tucked in on behind, right in front of his ear. I call that the secret mouth. You can have fun. You can add all sorts of fun little surprises in your character. Now, since he's a little woodland dome, Why don't we give him some big old ears? <laughs> yeah, that'll be very nice. <laughs> Alright, I think I'm losing Sean Frost. I'm going into some like... <laughs> so like, 
<laughs> Weird sociopath. Uh, he's a bard, I think. Is that what I said? We can give him some hair like this in the front. <laughs> oh, Oh my goodness. Alright. Alright, this would be cool. Maybe I sh should I finish him? I'm a little lazy. Alright, let's do it. But we'll do it a little sketchier this time. We're gonna do it a little faster. <laughs> so, I did the sketch. I'm gonna have to do some shading. Put some of the shading in there. Shade some of the. Oops, that's not big enough. Shade some of the bigger areas. Oh, I'm concentrating very hard. I forgot to speak. Is anyone there? Hello? 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 Is anybody out there? Anybody out there? I think that might be from a movie. Movie of my life. Alright, and now let's shade the whole thing in. See, we're going to go over the other one because that's going to give us the shadows. In the sh Elven bard lurking in the shadows. Yeah. What are you doing lurking in those shadows? Shadows. I says, what are you doing lurking in those doo -doo 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 shadows? And I got to carve it out a little bit. I'm going to do this one a little less polished, or less, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep it a little rough. Rough like the bard, the bardish king, flying around on golden wings, hitting you with his magic sling. It shoots little tiny bees that sting. Never challenge the bardish king. Do, 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 do. That's just a little sample from my new concept album, Tales of the Bardish King. Never ever mess with the bardish king. He'll kick you in the face with his beautiful wings. Never ever mess with the bardish king. The Garden Prince. He'll show you something weird and he'll make you wince. Ugh. That's right. Very serious. Very serious business doing artwork. You guys, I don't know if you take it seriously enough. I see a lot of people smiling out there, living their lives. Acting like. Alright. <laughs> Alright. It's late. That's it for me. Thank you for joining me. If you made it this far, then you better leave a comment to let me know. Because that's absolutely ridiculous. And wonderful. And so I say to the peace and God bless and stay fantastic.